Oh, I think he wants to be our friend, guys. I think he's our friend. We should go say hello. Take me down to where my stars are shining All around me like halogen One million diamonds over the horizon Every Alright, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Corpse Party. Last time we uh, saved... Ayumi from drowning herself. That was fun. Uh, and then we got the wrong ending. That was also fun. And then one of our classmates, uh, as we're walking up to this area, just like, hey, I have this tongue, I think it was. No, it was, it was tongue? I think it was tongue. I'm not sure. Either way, he was like, I have it. And like, the doll just told us that, you know, like the tongue was beneath Suzumoto's body. So now, you know, Ayumi's like, oh my God, where'd he get that tongue? And we're like, hey, Let's, you know, it, do we get to see? I want to see if we get to see. Like, is the body, like, all, like, pushed to the side? And the oh, Ayumi, why? Why do you stop us from seeing if this guy really dug up Suzumoto's body to get this tongue? I think it was a tongue. There was a tongue, eyeball, and another tongue? I don't think it was two tongues. I am missing the third, the third uh, appendage that was taken. I don't remember what it was. Shit. It was eye, tongue. I guess we'll find out. Hello! Give it back! No, um, the guy I think had the eyeball now that I'm thinking about it. This girl's missing an eye. Oh, we do have a tongue. Oh. Oh my god, it's a tongue. Is it gonna be enough? What do we do? Pull out the tongue bag? No! Why would you piss her off? The girl lowers her head and begins rocking back and forth slowly. Yukikano? But all we have is a tongue! This is for you. It is yours, isn't it? No, why would I offer her her tongue? Oh shit, maybe I pressed the wrong thing. Oh. Thank you very much. But wait. No, wait, what just happened? All three of them. I thought she was missing an eye. All is left is the girl in the red. No, no more. Every time I talk to these ghosts, I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to death myself. Do you have any idea what it's like? I keep picturing how I'll look when I'm dead, and I'm not even trying. It just pops into my head all on its own, and it's such a horrible image. I want to go home. I just want to go home. Back to my mom and my sister. And Mochita. Oh man, that's going to make Yuki Yoshiki very jealous. Shinozaki. Wakatta. Tsugi. Ore ga yaru kara yo. Dakara. All right. Next one is mine then. Okay. Shikari. So just try to pull yourself together. Just like that. God damn it. Not again. This one's big too. That's what she said. Oh no, not holes. Ooh. Oh, I think he wants to be our friend, guys. I think he's our friend. We should go say hello. No, we shouldn't. Oh. Fairly certain that's what we need to do is go say hello. Was I knocked out? Well, did you black out? I mean, what kind of question is that? Where am I?
It's a trap. Is this our classroom? For real? It's a trap. Don't believe it. Shinozaki. Shinozaki. Hey, wake up. She's breathing at least. Shinozaki. Shinozaki, come on, wake up already. Take a look around you. I can hardly believe it myself, but here we are. It's a trap! <laughs> no way. We're back? For real? Is this really our school? No. I don't believe it. It's really real. Check it out. Here's my desk. Mine too. I can't believe it. So it's true. Yeah, we made it. We're home. We're home. Fuck yeah. Suck on that world. I don't believe it. Oh, now she's crying again. Oh, I can move around again. I was like, well, now what? Now what? I never thought I'd live to see home again. Satoshi and Yui-sensei are back. Are back? Guess there's no Satoshi or Mrs. Yu or anyone else, huh? That's what reading the desk means? Something's amiss. Venturing out in search of the others, you find that even the janitor has likely gone home. The lights are out and the halls are pitch black. Only the red glow of the uh, light next to the fire extinguisher offers any respite of the quaint, quiet darkness of the school hallway. Standing around in the darkened corners of our school building at 8 a.m. in the evening just feels so surreal. As the thunder and rain grow in intensity, the windows begin to constate with moisture turning white in contrast to the corridor sea of black. Is this reality? That's what I've been saying. Was everything up to until now just a dream? Where am I right now? And what am I doing? What's Shizaki, what's wrong? Oh. Oh, by half the room and the desk. What the hell is this? It's not over, is it? Why isn't it over? Why? Damn it. It's you! Shit. Go back! Don't come any closer! I mean, she's here to talk, obviously. You don't have to freak out, Shinozaki. It was a rainy evening after school, just like this one. 
On the day I was kidnapped. I remember I had a fight with my mom that morning. Why is she telling us this? I, I have no idea. I didn't want to see her face. So, after school, I decided that instead of going home, I'd park myself in the outdoor walkway for a little bit and watch the rain. That's when Mr. Yoshikazu showed up. He sat down next to me. I told him all about the fight with mom, and he listened really closely, and just kept saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, he was sick. Damn it, I didn't read it. I really liked him. But then... You too. I'm so sorry. She's so tiny. She must be fifth grader. Yuki Kano, right? Thank you for what you did back there. For making the effort to help those of us who were killed in that school. Didn't we succeed though? Why are you still here? You, you didn't. But we returned your tongues. We gave you back the ability to tell your story. And we even got your murderer to repent for what he did. Is it just that you can't forgive him no matter what? Appeasing us isn't about forgiveness. It doesn't matter if we forgive or not. Repentance is between the criminal and the victim. It's a sole act capable of moving us. And, and oh, God damn it. And we exist as fragments of the sacred ground upon which Heavenly Host is sealed. I believe that moving us is your best course of action. But, but it's not enough. His repentance just wasn't enough. So you're saying his words, the words spoken by the doll, weren't good enough to appease you? That's not... So what then? What if he's not really the murderer and that's why they're not happy? Why do you feel the need to trap one innocent stranger after another in that forsaken, godforsaken place? You child spirits are the one who summoned us there, aren't you? That's not true. The hell do you mean by that? We're just cogs holding the closed spaces together. But you killed Suzumoto, didn't you? Wait! Huh? Let's hear her out.
I'm just glad I was able to get even the two of you back to safety. Oh, so this is real reality. What the hell are you suddenly so concerned about us? I heard about a situation like this from my sister once. A lost soul whose life had uh, was ended violently and abruptly, leaving her with a mountain of worries and regrets. It's kind of like stopping short at the edge of madness. With all sorts of thoughts and feelings swimming around in your head. Your, your kindly nature and your sudden hatred and panic began to spin around and around and you started acting without or acting out without any sort of control. Your sister's some kind of medium or something? Yeah, something like that. So what you're saying is, this little girl and the creepy little girl we met before are two sides of the same coin. I feel for you. I really do. So please, please bring the rest of them back. Mochita, Miss Shinadu, and everyone else too. Bring them all back home. Come on, you can do it, right? I don't think that's possible anymore. Why not? Those closed spaces have eaten a lot of innocent souls. Far too many, in fact. The grudges of those who died there have filled every last corner of them. There's no room left. And because the agony and pain has nowhere else to go, it's begun feeding on the minds and souls of like us who are bound there. It won't be long. Before I turn back into a vengeful spirit who attacks people like you without mercy. So, we're gonna lose you as an ally then. So, why don't you just hurry up and bring them home right now? Isn't, isn't there any other way any way for us to save Mochita and the others? There may be one. What what is it? I think you already know. You have to return to the closed spaces. Find all four of us heavenly host serial kidnapping and murder victims. And put us all to rest. Then the closed spaces won't have their cogs anymore, so they have should begin to fade in from existence. And you just might get your friends back. You expect us to go back? Yeah, 
And this time, instead of just having one person left to appease, we have to go back to the drawing board and appease all four of you? Why? Couldn't you tell us the reason or the reason our previous efforts weren't good enough? What is there to hide? It's just something I don't want to remember, but if you really want to know what if you really want to know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened. Yugi's spirit gently took hold of Yumi's hand, and in an instant, their two beings seemed to merge together into a single mind. What's going on? Shirozaki. It hurts. It hurts. Huh? What happened to me? Didn't I pass out? So why am I fully aware right now? I can't see a thing, and I can't move. It's like that feeling you get when you're really tired. Sleep paralysis, I think. <gasps> Where? <laughs> Why can't I move? Shinozaki-sachiko. <laughs> Sachiko's Shinozaki, the little girl in the red dress, and the only survival of the horrific murders that occurred in Heavenly Host Elementary School. Following the incident, Sachiko's family fled from that area, moving to another prefecture to escape the frightful memories that remained here. Strangely, however, I've been unable to locate any other records of the Shinozaki family. No matter where I look, the only information I can find about them comes from the newspaper reports on the Heavenly Host murders. Granted, when an elementary school becomes the stage of, for a uh, grisly incident such as this, perpetrated by none other than the principal's own son, it stands to reason that the scandal would serve as the primary focus for public interest with all other details fading into the background. So of course, after learning that Sachiko was safe, further news of her whereabouts was largely ignored in favor of the media circus surrounding the school. But there's more to it than that. People weren't just uninterested in learning of Sachiko's history or, her, or whereabouts. There was simply no data to be had. I can't move my body because of sleep paralysis, I guess. But I can clearly see the room I'm in now. There's one boy and two girls in here, aside from myself. I recognize them. They're the children who were killed in Heavenly Host during the incident, but they're still alive. Unfortunately, they're all bound hand and foot and just sprawled out on the floor, and so am I. That's the real reason I can't move. No, stop, no, please, no. <laughs> now I'm blindfolded. I can't see a thing that's happening to me. And since my hands and feet are tied up, I can't move the blindfold either. That just makes everything so much worse. 
I guess because I can't see, I begin to listen more intently. The helpless cries of the other ch children echo off the walls of the cramped room. I'm so scared. It feels like my head's going to explode. What are you doing to me? Why am I blindfolded? Untie me. Cut the ropes. I want, I want to be able to use my hands and feet. Please. Please? I kept begging and pleading, but all I heard in response was the man walking away from me. In order, okay. In order? Oh god, that would suck. I mean, all of this would really suck, but being the last one... To listen to it all happen before it gets to you? Ugh. I've never heard some um, screaming like this before. It's pure prim primal terror, cutting through the air like perfect sine wave. It's the boy at the end. It feels like he's screaming for an attorney. I think he's being killed right now. My god, what the hell is he doing to him? No one deserves this. Why isn't God why isn't God allowing him to fall unconscious so he doesn't have to suffer? Or, you know, not to have this happen to him, but you know, whatever. It's been at least half an hour now. Those inhuman screams of the young boy being ripped apart from the inside have finally come to a halt. Without even a, a single moment of silence, the first of the girls in line is the next to scream for her life, and the symphony goes on. God, I can't take much or any more of this. I'm losing my mind. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I mean, you asked, technically. Is it still going on? Come on, just die already. Die already? God, what is wrong with me? You know what? I don't care. Just get it over with and leave me in peace. Finally, after hearing the sound like a heavy object being dropped, the noise stopped and the room grew quiet again. Thump, thump, thump. Those footsteps are getting closer. All my hair standing at the end of at this point. Everything below my stomach feels like it's frozen, like I've suddenly been stricken with severe diarrhea. In order, God, why am I relieved by the silence? This means it's my turn now. <laughs> Someone's got me by the hair, they're pulling my head down, or head up, and taking off my blindfold, which means I get to see the face of my killer. The four missing children were found in the basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary School, unused and officially sealed since the building's construction. When authorities entered, they were greeted with an inhuman horrific sight. Based upon the evidence at hand, the murder weapon was determined to be a pair of large sewing scissors found in the hands of the accused. Investigators suspected some hesitation of the man's part. However, as the deceased victim's wound, wounds did not indicate that his full strength had been used. Nonetheless, he had clearly acted with extreme malice intent. The, off, the official cause of death for the three murdered children has been listed as loss of blood following removal of tongue. But the actual state of affairs was not quite as clinical, not, nor even so pleasant, if you can believe it. The following details have been ex extraploited from information previously un unreleased to the public, or at least previously unreported by the news outlets. These de details of the crime are based on the official police testimony of Sachiko Shinozaki herself. Evidently, the victims were bound, blindfolded, and spaced out on the floor, then killed one by one. One was repeatedly stabbed in the abdomen with the aforementioned pair of scissors then had many of his in internal organs forcibly dug out. His discarded innards were found particularly buried beneath uh, the sorry, buried beneath the earthen floor of the basement. Another was stabbed in the head dozens upon dozens of times to such an extent 
that all the flesh and bone above her jawline was essentially minced away. With my blindfold removed, the sight that appeared before me was more horrific than anything I could possibly have imagined. The person staring at, back at me, brandishly a blood-soaked blood pair of sewing scissors, wasn't the large man from earlier at all. Oh, so he wasn't alone. I thought that. It was one of the children. It was the little girl, her face dyed red with the blood of her victims. Oh, what's, what's, oh, okay. Oh, it's the girl in the red dress. She was staring intently at me with the soulless gray eyes, and then I was just focusing on what the guy's doing. What is that guy doing? She just started giggling. <laughs> what is he doing? I just want to know. She was opening and closing the bloodied scissors over and over again, and the sound kept echoing through the room. Then she took those dull, rusty, thoroughly blood-soaked blades and slowly brought them closer and closer to my left eye. <laughs> How? Why? Why is it you? The v third victim was stabbed in the left eye and in and a number of times until her eyeball became soup-like in consistency. She was eventually just left like that, slowly bleeding to death in horrible agony. Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been afflicted that the killer went back and severed the victim's tongues. Learning the truth about these proceedings is shocking even to me and makes it nearly impossible to accept the murderer as anything but a monster and bearing witness to every moment of this was a seven-year-old girl named sachiko in many ways she's the most pitiable and long-suffering of them all but it was through her tearful frightened testimony that yoshikazu um uh, yanagorihori was officially charged now going back to the hunt for information on this unfortunate girl's whereabouts, it was her words that ultimately led to Yoshi Kazu's sentencing. Therefore, it came to no real surprise that it's that sensitive information pertaining to her and her family would be withheld. That's to be expected. What's not expected, however, is that there's not even the slightest trace of information left to find. It's as if it simply never existed. Therefore, I cannot help but consider alternate possible explanations, and I remind you, this is mer, mere mer, this is mer, <laughs> conjecture. But one question keeps nagging at the back of my mind. Was Yoshikazu really the murderer of all three victims? Is it possible this crime was not actually perpetrated by him at all? Think about it. In the, his final days, Kashu, or Yo, Yoshikazu was incapable of communicating with others through speech. And despite his childlike reversion, he'd always been a personable and friendly man. As the saying goes, he wouldn't have hurt a fly. All his relatives, friends, and neighbors confirmed as much, shocked to hear that such a kindly man could attempt these unconscionable atrocities. He certainly had no motive for the crime either. There was nothing for him to gain from it. Then again, he may simply have lost his mind. Look at his father. It was around the same time that Principal Yanagori Hori suddenly be uh, began speaking in tongues and acting in the most particular way. Not to mention scribbling incomprehensible gibberish all over the walls, as if possessed. He seemed frightened of someone and would often be found crouching in the corner of his office, moaning and thrashing when visitors came by. If he could wind up in such a beleaguered state with no warning, then perhaps so, could, um, so too it could his son. I believe that we're looking at a curse far more powerful than anything man could devise. From the time it opened its doors to the day it closed them forever. Heavenly Host Elementary School sealed basement room has existed as some sort or some form of cursed ground. And to find the underlying cause, we must go beyond the infamous kidnapping and murder incident. 
back a whole 20 years. I believe I may have found a clue that could shed some light on the situation. It may be a bit far-fetched as leads go, but it is a lead nonetheless. Regrettably, since Heavenly Host was not the only closed down but demolished altogether, was not only closed down, another school built in its place. It's no longer possible to investigate the basement room directly. But may my per prestige ha has found out what may be the next best thing. Protégé. Maybe? Yeah, protégé. Something more, something that could be, or that, wow, something that could make the impossible possible once more. Preparations are being made to pursue this lead even now. Be sure not to miss the next installment. But I wasn't done reading that! Damn it! Alright guys, that's the end of this episode. We have chapter 5 still to complete. We're done with chapter 4. Sorry, I'm stretching. Oh, well I kind of figured that the guy didn't do it after like, the girl was like, it wasn't enough. He, he didn't say it. And the girl's like, but he did say it. Why isn't that enough for you? And I'm like, wait, maybe there was another killer. I didn't think it was the girl in the red dress. Anyways, though, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, press that like button. If you want to watch more videos, press that subscribe button. I make videos Monday through Thursday and sometimes on Friday. And I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!